years ahead of the dominant media. FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Morning, Malcolm Mel- Good morning, Melody. <laughs> We've had we've been, we've been talking like ten minutes. We've been prior talking to, for ten minutes on about <laughs> everything. Have a problem. <laughs> oh, good. You know, morning. I will tell you. Yeah. I will tell you that I had a friend that uh, has been listening to us, and he said, "You know what? I think you and Melody are finally clicking." <laughs> <laughs> he says, "You're finally clicking." I said, "Yeah, we're kind of learning a little bit about each other. It's uh, we're doing pretty good." By the way, Melody, you know you're on my show on Wednesday. I hadn't told you that yet. Oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like putting you on the spot here as we're on the air. <laughs> do I have you? No, you know what? I do not. That's the 13th? Yeah. Okay. I we'll talk about conflicts my... later if you've got a conflict. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> we I'm can always good. move the Wednesday, but uh, <laughs> that was the every other one. So. <laughs> and we I have to remind to the listeners that you have a program after this one on 12.160. And so, you know, folks, when you're uh, when this program is over, you can tune that one in, and uh, uh, you'll be able to hear two hours of us on Wednesday. And I also have another program, Financial Survival. It comes on at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on WWCR 9880. And you can also go to my website, dgscoins.com, and you can also listen to it live from the website. DGS coins coins dot, dot com. <laughs> yes. So you now, know, I had a I had a letter today when I and I normally try not to really look at my mail too much when I come in in the morning because I'm kind of busy getting two shows to ready here. But um, this gentleman was talking about CSC Talk Radio. He had listened on Labor Day and was very moved by the by the show that I had on Labor Day. Uh, and by the way, if you want to listen to those, you can go to my website, csctalkradio.com. And, uh, but he had mentioned Melody, and we talked about shortwave quite a bit, because this is shortwave. Uh, CSC Talk Radio is nationally syndicated and on shortwave. But he said that something I should have mentioned and that I didn't was if, if the EMP attack happens, if something with the hurricane happen, if something happens that we are taken out with the electricity and that kind of thing, um, that your shortwave radios, AM and FM radio will be down, but your shortwave radios will not be. So I didn't know that. I guess you have to find electricity, you know, but shortwave radios would uh, uh, still be working. So that, that was something I did not know. Yeah, unfortunately, I believe government can also take over shortwave in, in a, if they de- deem they can take over certain frequencies. I think I don't know if this is um, I was told this a long time ago that they can actually take over frequencies if there is a an emergency well, I would type say situation. An emergency yeah. like that because it is up and for being a party pooper. I mean, I'm giving good. News and then you're a party pooper. <laughs> because, well, no, because it is up and active is my whole point. You know, because it isn't right. shut down that they do have access um, to the short wave. So, um, speaking of government, <laughs> we do have a today is an anniversary of nine eleven. It's hard to believe it's been sixteen years, but uh, President Donald you know, Trump. That is something to you. Go ahead. President Go Donald ahead. Trump President Donald Trump observed a, a solemn moment of silence today at the White House. It was his first presidential remembrance of the 9-11 terror attacks. Both the First Lady and the President stood uh, stoically on the White House South Lawn. They both bowed their heads in honor of the moment that, their first, that the first plane hit the North Tower of New York's Twin Towers. And White House staffers also joined them on the lawn. And... Um, Vice President Mike Pence is observing the day in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. That's the site where the United Airlines Flight 93 crashed or blown out of the sky, <laughs> whichever one you believe. Um, so either way, either way, down. he's that's where President Trump, uh, Vice President uh, Mike Pence is at. So it is the 16th anniversary of the 9/11, and um, and we, you know. There are so many unanswered questions about 9-11, but 
the one thing that is for sure is we lost a lot of Americans that day. And that's what this day is about, is remembering them and their families. It's um, a day that uh, we need to uh, commemorate. And, and, you know, we've talked a lot about knocking statues down, this and that. History is who we are, and we learn from history. And uh, it's... um, one thing for sure, like I said, we lost an awful lot of Americans that day. And the the United States, we all remember that day. Everybody can remember where they were. Big big days like that in history. Uh, you know, I was just a little kid when uh, President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. I remember where I was. I was in fourth grade. I remember grade. where I was. I remember where I was. Uh, I was in fifth. <laughs> I remember where I was when um, the... Uh, the shuttle was was um, exploded. I remember where I was 9/11, and the phone calls. I was working for Derry Brownfield, and the phone calls that started coming in. One of my sons called immediately, "Mom, what's going on?" And uh, and you know, I said, "Well, you know as much as I do, but it's not good." And um, you know, it's um, those are things that you don't forget. I remember. I remember the first football game, high school football game. I had my, my youngest was still in high school. And, uh, you know, the, the silence and the, when the uh, national anthem was played and uh, they had a moment of silence. And, of course, there were no airplanes in the sky at that point, yet they had not come back. You know, they had not uh, opened the skies back up. Uh, it was different. You know, you could tell when you walked out of the house there was something different in the air. And uh, uh, so today we remember all those that were lost. I remember 9-11 afterwards when you mentioned the planes were not flying. I remember not, quiet. <laughs> not even the quiet, but I remember how blue the sky was. Mm-hmm. So yes. blue. And, you know, you hear all this global warming stuff. It's like, why don't they take a look at these people? <laughs> Traffic. <laughs> you know, the mountain airplanes that are up there, in addition to the chemtrails. But no, I remember the skies were just a beautiful, beautiful blue that you just don't see as often anymore. And I also remember the markets being closed, considering I'm in the, the finance business. And I remember the markets being closed, and I remember gold coming back online days before the paper markets did. So another mm-hmm. important thing to remember when you're buying gold and silver, um, it uh, really trades 24-7. And it is, you know, after cash, it is very liquid. It's very easy to um, sell your gold and your silver to liquidate. So keep that in mind as you're, you know, holding a lot of those paper investments. How easy is that going to be? Um, to sell, to liquidate, if we did have an EMP attack. Uh, you're gonna, you might be making tons of money, but how are you going to get that money? You won't. Mm-hmm. And uh, so things to think about uh, as you're looking at your portfolios, thinking about what you need to do to you know, protect them somewhat more you better get some gold and silver and speaking of gold and silver i do have uh there was uh about the cost maybe we'll do that as we go into the next sector beth but okay uh there is a newport beach i think everyone has pretty much heard of monix i mean they've been around since 1967 and, you know, everybody thinks that because the, the, these dealers are bigger, they're better. Well, they're not. Those ones that you see on TV, they're not better just because they have commercials on TV. In fact, that probably <laughs> makes them a little riskier because they have to pay for those commercials. Those commercials. <laughs> so, you know, they and there's nothing wrong because I had inquired about running commercials, but I don't steal from my customers. But anyway, there was a suit filed against Monex uh, by the... Uh, CFTC, the the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, um, that the company defrauded thousands of customers out of $290 million between July 16, 2011 and March 31st. Um, 
this is one of the largest precious metals fraud cases in the history of the commission. Uh, the defendants defrauded thousands of retail customers, many whom are, of course, elderly, out of hundreds of millions of dollars as part of a multi-year scheme. Um, and what Molnix did, and in fact, I was just doing an investigation on their Atlas program. I mean, it was just a week and a half ago. I told one of the the people that work here, why don't you you know look into this Atlas program, figure out what it's all about, and so forth. And I just hadn't gotten a chance to to talk about it. But according to the complaint, Monix offered leverage trading in gold, silver, platinum, palladium to customers through its Atlas program. Monix deceptively touted the program as a safe, secure, and profitable way to invest in precious metals. So their pitch was, if you have, you can buy a hundred thousand dollars of metal of gold for only twenty-five thousand. Now, people, come on. <laughs> if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. I mean, I don't understand how $290 million can be conned out of people. Or, I, I just wake up. I don't, I don't get it. But basically, the complaint was due to taxes. There, after a 25-year battle, the federal government sued Monex for nearly $400 million in back taxes. The suit sought unpaid taxes from 1980 through 1984, plus interest and penalties, and that totaled $378 million. So, I mean, they fought it for 25 years. Um, if their taxes were, were that high back in 1980, they were making some big bucks. <laughs> Oh, my God. Uh, but I think most of that is interest in penalties. So they don't really say, but it's just uh, that. Um, so, again, folks, it's just because you think the, de- the company is bigger doesn't make them better. I had one client call me. He says, you know, Melody, he says, I really thought I was a person that couldn't be conned. He says, I'm I'm smart. He says, I, I hear you talk about people, the, these other gold dealers and the scams. And he says, I really didn't think I could be scammed. I didn't think I could be conned. And he said, guess what? He says, I was conned. He says, mm-hmm. silver has to go to $50 before he breaks even. And um, wow. he was, you know, certainly embarrassed, shocked to relay this information to me, but uh, uh, it helps other people because I can relay this information to you. So you don't, they're clever, they're brilliant. You know, these people Mm. uh, are just brilliant con people. Well, and they pray, you know, they pray on the uh, people. They pray on your fears. The fears, your desperation, you know, and a lot of Americans right now are desperate. They feel that desperation of they don't know what's going to happen. Uh, they they either haven't got jobs or they're just barely making it because they're working part time, cut back hours, cut back time, whatever um, salaries, uh, whatever the case may be. You know, it's uh, they're desperate and they want to be able to secure the future, and uh, they'll look to anything. And uh, it's it's. Uh, you know they prey on you. They uh, absolutely they're predators and and uh, they're they're con jobs and con men and con women and they they will uh, take advantage of you at every turn. I hear music. Yes, we do. <laughs> I do. I hear music. We're going into a, a break. Your calls are welcome at seven one seven three hundred twelve eighteen at seven one seven three hundred twelve eighteen. We come back. I want to talk a little bit about how quiet North Korea was this weekend and the hurricanes were not quiet and uh we'll talk a little bit about that when we come back 717-300-1218 and melody and i'll be right back hear it first on firstamendmentradio.com and firstamendmentradio.net gold and silver is tremendously undervalued 
global demand vastly exceeds mine supply by more than 60% annually. There is little in the financial world more certain than a coming explosion in the prices of gold and silver. The U.S. dollar continues to lose value and respect as the world's reserve currency. Our nation faces challenges on many fronts, and a day doesn't pass without another economist bringing forth warnings of impending economic calamity. There has never been a better time than right now to acquire physical gold and silver. Discount Gold and Silver Trading was founded on the principles of truth and honesty. We believe in providing a quality product, quality service, and most importantly, competitive pricing. We provide all forms of precious metals, including American gold, silver, platinum, and rare investment and circulated coins. Silver bars, rounds, and 90% silver bags are on hand for the silver investor. Gold self-directed IRAs are available. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, that's 1-800-375-4188. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Yuji. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a re-established Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions, and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more, using Scripture to interpret Scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit Cross the Border. Org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. Years ahead of the dominant media, FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. We have returned. You're listening to Power Talks with Beth Ann and Melody in the morning, or Melody and Beth Ann in the morning, whichever way you want to look at it. <laughs> and uh, when we were going into break, we talked a little bit about Monex, and I had to confess that I had never heard of them. And when we were in the break, I asked uh, Melody if she'd heard about the uh, Equifax uh, situation that's going on. My son was actually texting me about it on Friday night, and I kind of had already zoned out, and I hadn't. I'd heard just a little bit on Lou Dobbs, so I thought we ought to talk about that just a little bit today. Well, Equifax, I think everyone knows, is one of the credit reporting agencies out of the three of them. And um, um, they, and I think why this got, there's two reasons why it's gotten, um, um, well, well, we'll just start out. Equifax came out, I think it was Thursday, that 140 million plus people could be affected by a recent data breach uh, where you had cyber hacking criminals sold information that included social security numbers, birth dates, addresses, and a bunch uh, and some driver's licenses. Additionally, credit card numbers for about 209,000 people were exposed, as was personal identifying information on roughly 182,000 customers involved in the credit report disputes. Uh, as I mentioned, you have Equifax as one of the three nationwide credit reporting companies and uh, that track and rate the financial history of U.S. consumers. And so mm. they have everything on you. And Equifax is not going to be contacting anyone who was affected, 
but will send direct mail notices to those whose credit card numbers or dispute records were accessed. Now, this was initially done back in July, and of course, uh, you know, it's irritating that they knew it happened in July, but why do they wait until September uh, to report uh, this hacking? And they had three top, I think one was the president, um, sold a bunch of shares three days prior to the release of the information. And, of course, once the information was released, of course, their shares tanked. And so, you know, it's just irritating that, you know, the people are the last to know. And what's interesting, I was just fighting with one of my, not fighting, but I made notification with one of my credit cards that on, in July, when this was breached, I don't know if it has anything, but there was a $300 charge on one of my credit cards. And what was interesting is the month before, I actually did have a $300 credit card charge. So it's interesting that it mimicked a previous charge. So, And at first I thought, well, that must have just been <laughs> that charge. But then I pay off my credit card bills every month. So I figured, well, no, I would have paid that. And that's what made me look at it a little bit closer. So very easy for you know for them to put something through and you so folks uh, be careful make sure you double check your credit cards and go all the way back to July to make sure something didn't get uh, uh, picked up on you so 143 million and uh, how did they how did they get away with not notifying all the customers or all the people that have been affected by that I mean I know they've given a website and you have to go there and then you have to wait. <laughs> you have to go there. They can tell you whether they think you might have been or not. Um, but uh, I, I would think that they would have a responsibility to tell people this has been, you have been compromised. Your, your information has been compromised. But the fact that they went so long without even... Mm. Hmm. Yeah, and you know, even the president says, "Well, we didn't know." Oh, baloney! <laughs> if anybody believes that, I got a bridge what in Lou Florida, said. especially. He said <laughs> I got a bridge in Lou Florida. Lou Dobbs said baloney too. That's what he said. Is that it, what he's crazy? It absolutely. Well, he he used a little stronger baloney, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, come he on. He didn't buy that story either. Yes. So you know. What this shows and tells everyone, there is no privacy anymore. Anything computer, it's like everything can be hacked. Everything can be stolen. And these companies, whether it be a, a credit agency, whether it, look how long Target knew. They were one of the first ones that were hacked by the millions. Look how they long get it hacked took. hacked about every year. Yeah, and look how long it took for them to, to, to make the announcement to the degree of, of uh, the final numbers. Wells Fargo, they had people creating, <laughs> creating accounts, and they knew. And look how long it took for them to, to release this information. So it's just like anything else. They don't want any panic. They don't want any rush or, or quick decisions for people to pull their money out and to make changes in, in how they do business. Heavens no. They'll, they might lose a dollar or two. Hmm. So your interests, the listener's interests, our, list, our interests, they don't care about anyone. And it's the world that we live in today. So it's another reason for folks to have gold and silver. Get out of their system. You know, right. your true privacy and protection begins once you own gold and silver. So, I, and I get you have to be in the system somewhat. I have to be in the system to, to, to run a business. And, uh, but you certainly can protect, and, and protect you against the risks by owning gold and silver. Well, you so. know, many, many years ago, the only credit card we had was Sears. Mm. <laughs> or pennies. And, uh, we, yeah, well, I, I did have pennies for a little while. I quit them because they kept giving me these weird charges, and I, I just said, I'm done with you. So I quit quit with pennies. But uh, <clears throat> I don't think we have a Sears one anymore either. But that was the only one I had. And, you know, we only went and purchased stuff when we had to there. And <clears throat> But uh, we were going to go out on a 
a little weekend um, vacation, so to speak, for an anniversary. And uh, we were going down to Branson, just, you know, a little place here in Missouri, you know. And uh, But you couldn't make a reservation with a Sears card. <laughs> you couldn't make a reservation over the phone unless you had a major credit card. So we had to cave then and, and get a major credit card. So everybody has – you have to have those crazy plastic cards in order to – if you're going to do something like that, if you're going to reserve. Isn't um, it funny how they conditioned all of us to make sure we have credit cards? It's uh, – yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's some places that refuse to take cash. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how they can get away with that, but they do. And uh, But I think we ought to contest that. I, I seriously think that that should be contested because uh, that is... Uh, what well, isn't the businesses that have, you know, they would take cash if government didn't make it so difficult for them to take cash? Well... I don't know. Some of them just won't take it. Maybe that is the reason behind it. But some of them are state offices that won't take cash. So, in fact, wait a minute. I mean, I don't take cash. <laughs> Company policy. Okay. Be because it's okay. because well because I deal with larger amounts. Well, sure. And you know, I don't want to deal with all the forms that have to be completed. You know, if someone sent me a box of $100 bills of over $10,000, i got to do all the government forums. Oh, yes, that's the, yeah, so, I understand that. So okay. even during the, 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 the crisis, I turned down hundreds of thousands of dollars because I, people wanted to come to my office and bring me their cash. It's like, no, I don't want your cash. Put it in the bank and write me a check. Let the right. bank mess with all the forums. And um, so, and of course, that wasn't their ideas you know and that's the problem you hear people say well I, I stick all my cash under the mattress well that's all good and fine and dandy but there's going to come a day when you want to spend it or you might need it to spend it on something and if you have more than ten thousand dollars in cash you're going to have to still take it to the bank and they they just they don't really care what you do with it to some degree but they want to track where you got it they want to track the cash and, uh, oh yes, you know, oh, yes. So it's it's okay to have cash. I tell my clients if you want to keep cash at home, figure out what your. And this is my opinion. It's not advice. It's my opinion. I tell people to hold to figure up what your monthly expenses are, and multiply that by three or six if you're real conservative. That's the amount of cash that you should have, so you can pay your your expenses. Your, your monthly expenses if something happens and uh, you can't get to, you know, your accounts or so forth and you need that cash. So you can still pay your taxes and your house payment and so forth. So that's once you become, you know, once you start holding too much cash, it's just too hard to bring it back into the system. Yeah, I do understand that part of that. But, uh, you know, there's uh, there's an agency that uh, they do the background checks. And if you work for a state office, you have to have a background check in certain ones, and whether you're a construction worker or whatever. And so uh, you have to pay for that background check, but you cannot pay cash for it. And that just drives me crazy because it's not that much money. I don't remember if it's 25 or $35 or what it is that you have to pay for this background check, but you can't pay cash. And that's a state – it's a state – agency and it's i'm like why can't you pay cash for that and i think well is it because they don't get they don't have a cash drawer so they can't give you change why is it you can't pay cash for it? you have to write a check you or a use a credit card i don't know anyway it's it's crazy world we're living in we do have a lot of um americans that are without power in the in the wake of the hurricane there in florida over three million people are without power it uh, as bad as it is, and I didn't get to see any news this morning. Um, it wasn't as bad as they thought it was going to be, but it was worse in some places because, you know, like storms are, they're unpredictable. They're kind of like women, aren't they? <laughs> they're unpredictable. You don't know what they're going to do, <laughs> where they're going to go. So um, it uh, took a turn and went a different, not totally different direction, but a different direction they, than what they had originally thought it was going to do. And it did, after it hit land, it did... Um, the power of it, its intensity, intensity lowered, but not a whole lot. I mean, it's down to Hurricane One, I think, now. 
uh, or was late last night, early this morning. That, yeah, uh, I think th- I think it's even dropped to a tropical storm now, but it's actually heading north northwest. Kind of, t- it looks like it might even get the little tip there of uh, Missouri. And yeah, I uh, think Cape Girardeau is supposed to get hit. Yes, mm-hmm. down in the Boot Hill. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, but by the time it gets there, I'm assuming they'll just have some rain and so forth. But the, that is the part of Missouri that has been already devastated with flooding. So. Any rain down there right now is is not going to be a good thing because mm-hmm. it's already been pretty pretty riddled with flooding earlier this year and uh, so North Korea stayed quiet after all their threats that they were going to do something this weekend they stayed quiet knock on wood that they will continue to stay quiet well there's and, there's I talked about this on Friday there's a decision coming out of the UN Nikki Haley uh, had presented where they wanted to ban all oil, um, all of North Korea's imports of oil on their tankers, and if we came across any of their tankers, that we would be able to um, militarily um, go on their tankers. Now, supposedly, um, that probably wouldn't get passed. I mean, to, if, I mean, if you want to talk about a uh, you know, a uh, something leading to war, that would be it. I was so going to say, that would kind of... It is an act of war, uh-huh. um, but banning all the oil. So maybe he's waiting to see what this decision uh, coming out of the U.N. will be today. But I guess that's supposed to be done today. But things change, did, who knows. And I didn't hear that on Friday, and uh, I wished I would have. I, I watched the news on this weekend when I normally don't because I was watching the storm. Um, so I was watching that, and that's all they were telling. They weren't giving anything else. Um, and that kind of bothered me because, you know, they put their reporters there in harm's way. I saw a guy last night, and I thought he was going to get blown off the street. Uh, literally, you know, he's sitting there fighting the the wind, and some of them are standing in the water while they're telling everybody else, don't go stand in the water. And it's like, seriously, people, you've got – electricity there with your microphone <laughs> i know we have a little festival here in california missouri which is coming up this saturday i'll put a little plug out it's called the ham and turkey festival it's put on by the uh, turkey uh, industry here which is cargill and and ham and turkey is by this burger smokehouse and i'm going to tell you right now you have not had good ham until you've had burger smokehouse ham but um uh what was I going to say? Oh, they have different uh, different uh, entertainment and stuff, and I have been singing, and I haven't the last two years. I'm going to sing in front of my office this year, but uh, they'll have different entertainers or choirs from the schools or whatever, and it was pouring down rain, and I'm, I go up the street here, and I'm standing there singing on the, on the stage, and the guy who's, who's uh, putting this on, he's, got, he's holding an umbrella over me, and I'm thinking, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm singing in the rain, and it wasn't that much fun. <laughs> so, so it wasn't hurricane conditions. It was just rain, but uh, still, well, the, the, electricity and water don't mix. No, no. But there was certainly um, all the news was focused on, uh, in fact, there wasn't any 9-11 news, I think, up until today. But you know what's something else, else interesting is, you know, we hear about Robert Mueller and the investigation and the Russians and, and, and Mr. Trump, and yet he's the one that uh, obstructed Congress, uh, the 9-11 probe. So, you know. <laughs> Who was that? Robert Who? Mueller. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's... I it's, had... It's, I... I had a short article here from the Daily Caller, and I guess I missed it. I'm going to have to go watch it today sometime this afternoon online, but I missed it because I forgot about it. That's the reason I missed it. Uh, Bannon's interview on, uh, I think, 60 Minutes? Yes. And I guess in that interview he said uh, the firing Comey was one of the biggest mistakes. Um, I, I don't think it was – I. Um, I don't think he thought that he didn't deserve firing. I don't think that's what it was. It was just that – it, you know, it it um, it mounted all this investigation and brought in Mueller and brought in this and brought in that, and so it has. It was just one of the biggest mistakes in modern political history, is what he said. And I think we can kind of see that it wasn't 
the timing was not well, that's for sure, or how it was done. And, and of course, he goes on and, you know, you got to – the uh, attorney general had already recused himself, so that put Rosen – what's his name? Uh, I can't ever think of his name. You were close well, enough. It, yeah, Rosen something. I've, I've got the article here. I just can't find his name real fast as I'm looking through there. It it's put him Monday. In Rosenstein. Monday. Rosenstein. Rosenstein. And um, put him in charge. And he's the one who brought in Mueller. You know, so, you know, I said, uh, get rid of Rosenstein. I said that a long, long time ago. <laughs> and because uh, he had to know. He had to know that Mueller who Mueller was and, and, you know, anyway, yeah, I think it was a big mistake, not because he didn't deserve firing. He did. He deserved that and a lot more, but, uh, and that was uh, one of the things that I couldn't understand. Cause I said that from day, the m- moment he fired Comey and then the manner in which he did it. Yes. I, I remember mean, even if he would have done it in a that. more professional manner, perhaps he wouldn't have gotten the heat that he received in, in all these new investigations. But, I mean, yeah, the firing in Comey, I said that from day one. That was, I didn't know if it, I didn't classify it as as uh, the biggest uh, political mistake in modern uh, politics, but I figured it was a bad one. I mean, you just don't hi- fire someone that's doing an investigation when you think it's just going to go away. Uh, you know, it, 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 and, and Mueller being Comey's best friend at that, so yeah, I mean it was bad news from you know from from the day he did that. So um, I only saw part of that interview with the very end of it, but I'm sure they'll be showing clips of it. Um, you once. can watch it in its entirety online, just okay. so you know that. <laughs> I'll probably do that late, late this afternoon. I've got so many other things on the docket to do. But, you know, Hillary's been out. (laughs) Hillary's been making all kinds of comments. She's had interviews, and I think the DNC just wished she would go away and stop it because she's just – but on the good side of it, she says she's not going to run. She's done running for for office. She's not going to campaign for another office. And that's the good news. <laughs> I heard her say, I heard her say that during the election evening, that she was so sure that she was going to win that she took a nap. Now, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're the first female thought to win the presidential elected shatter election. the ceiling or whatever it is and you take a nap i i think she, i think she, how do you take a nap she was not prepared to lose because one she'd already cheated to do it she had bought it but she just, bought that election she it. thought it was in the bag and it wasn't the american people turned it around and they said no and no, yes, she, no, she, that's just it. To me, it's just the opposite. <laughs> if I knew I had a shoe in, I'd be excited to, you know, oh, I, mean, yes. I would nap. No, but if I thought I was going to lose and I knew I wouldn't have to give a, any type of speech, if I knew I wouldn't have to um, go through all the what you go through after being elected president, then maybe I could take a nap. So I don't know. Maybe she... I don't think I'd have taken a nap. I don't think I could have taken a nap either way. I think the the anxiety of what was about to take place, win How or lose... How did you take a nap? You, I don't think you could. But she apparently did. She can. She did. <laughs> or she says she did. But my point was she wasn't prepared to lose because she thought she had it in the bag. And that's why she didn't have um, a speech prepared to uh, <laughs> to lose, you know, uh, um, to bow out gracefully. And, of course, we know she's done anything but bow out gracefully. She's still blaming everyone. Everyone's at fault but her. Um, did you hear about the book that her, pre- that her president, I'm sorry, that her um, pastor wrote, the devotional book? <laughs> the publisher took it all off the off the market and recalled or whatever because of plagiarism in it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> he took it out. Oh, that's a little awkward. I mean, she's standing by her deplorable mar- remarks. She still says that uh, 
that Trump was deplorable and anybody that followed him, they were just deplorable. And um, her concession speech, she she uh, didn't have it ready because she didn't even think she was going to lose. And uh, she's still blaming it on, on uh, the white people. I don't know. I yeah, thought she, she was white. But yeah. I, I guess... <laughs> She said Trump was quite successful in referencing a nostalgia that would give hope, comfort, subtle grievances for millions of people who were upset about gains that were made by others because, and uh, Jane Pauley interrupted, this is the interview with Jane Pauley, she says, what what you're saying is millions of white people. Clinton replied, millions of white people, yeah, millions of white people. And... um, it's just like it, it really isn't a white people issue. Yeah. I mean, and and the white people are upset about gains that are made by others because of what? I mean, it's just like... You mean like the Clinton Foundation? Yes, really. <laughs> if I was Jane Pauley, I'd have said, you mean like the Clinton Foundation? Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, you know, turning it into a white issue, it's just... Uh, thank- they ignore all the Hispanics that voted for Donald Trump. They ignore all the females who voted for Donald Trump. They, they ignore all, the, all the black people that voted for Donald Trump. And they just blame it on... And they try to make it a racist issue when it's not a racist issue. Um, they're the ones that are racist. Just making it a racist issue, uh, it's just... It's deplorable. That's what it is. It's deplorable what she does. <laughs> Yes, it truly is. It's despicable. um, Despicable. It really is. And you know what? And that started, you know, this week football started. Yes. And um, you have. Actually, it started last week. You had people following in the footsteps of um, Kaepernick. Mm. And Seattle's Michael Bennett and Oakland's Marshawn Lynch joined other NFL athletes Sunday in protesting the treatment of minorities by U.S. law enforcement during the first weekend of the regular season. Both Bennett and Lynch remained seated during the Star-Spangled Banner before the Seahawks and Raiders' season opening games. We'll talk a little bit about uh, that when we come back from break. And um, if we have any football listeners or watchers out there, give us a call. The Chiefs won on last week, on Thursday. Mm -hmm. I watched that, but that's the only game I'll probably end up watching. We are going into break. Your calls are welcome at 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218. The NFL's in big trouble, I do believe. And we will be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it. Nations have fought for it. It has been traded. It has been borrowed. It has been purchased. It has been stolen. There's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. 
Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. And we have returned to listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning. Uh, we welcome your calls at 717-300-1218. 717-300-1218. As we were going into the break, Melody mentioned the NFL and football. Are you ready for some football? And, of course, I like football, Melody. I like the Chiefs. I am a Kansas City girl. Uh was born in Kansas City. And they won last Thursday. That was when it, the uh, the uh, first game was. Of, um, and then they had games. They, it'll start this week. Mm, they had weekend games. And this will be first Monday night football. And... Uh, uh, the Chiefs actually had a big upset. They beat uh, the Patriots and, and pretty bad. And uh, there was an earthquake then. The earth moved and shook in Mexico. And I don't know that they were related, but it was a big upset. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> but the controversy, the controversy that's going on with the uh, NFL is uh, getting pretty uh, embarrassing, I would think, for the NFL if they had sense enough to be embarrassed. Yeah, really. And, um, you know, we're talking about two of the players, Seattle's and, and Oakland's uh, and other NFL athletes Sunday and protesting the uh, treatment of minorities by U.S. law enforcement. Um, both Bennett and Lynch were remain seated during the Star Spangled Banner. And um, but uh, Bennett's brother, Martellus, he plays for the Packers. He stood up at the end of the Green Bay bench with his right fist in the air. And mm. Bennett, he was detained about 10 minutes by police. And, of course, now he's saying that they singled him out and so forth. And the police uh, denied the charge. Uh, Raiders running back Lynch, he was also seated during the anthem. Uh, in Cleveland, in Cleveland, though, players linked arms with the police, military, and fighters, uh, firefighters during the anthem before the Browns opener against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and no players knelt during the song. You had in Philly, though, and it's only it's these big cities that you know Cleveland and Pittsburgh. You know they're they're like American football teams. <laughs> Not to say the other ones aren't, but you get it, L.A., Philly. You know, you had a couple of players in Philly who raised their fist in protest before the game started. And it's like, you know what, these guys can do whatever they want during their time off. But they're getting paid to do a job. So where's the boss? Where's the employer? Where's the NFL coming and saying, hey, you know, you shouldn't be voicing your personal protests uh, when I'm paying you um, to play football. Ball, nothing else, and yet the NFL seems to. Oh, well, they make their little politically correct, you know, you know, statements and so forth. But uh, they certainly haven't done anything uh, other than not bring um, um, Kaepernick back. He still remains unsigned uh, <laughs> after he was trying to land a job. So, you know, that should be an example for some of these other football players who are out there raising their fists. And sitting during the national anthem. <laughs> you know, it's and it's one thing. It's one thing to not stand. It's another thing to raise your fist. Yes. That is totally no, both wrong. a diff well, they are wrong. But there's a different uh attitude about raising your fist. Really you're gonna hate this nation. Now not only are they paid melody, they're paid very well. <laughs> you and I could really do a shopping spree on what they get paid on you know i mean i understand if they said i mean there are some religions that you don't stand for the national anthem i get that you know and they should be but to kneel and so you you can't say if they you know if they're sitting on the bench if 
um, is that the, um, oh, I can't remember which, um, it's not the Mormons, but um, the ones who come knocking on your door. Uh, uh, Jehovah Witnesses. Jehovah Witnesses. I believe they uh, don't stand for the national anthem. So, I mean, if one of these guys are Jehovah Witnesses, okay, I get that. I understand that. Um, you don't see them kneeling, so maybe they have a, another reason. Or raising and, a fist. Or raising a fist is really... You know, these these athletes, they have been given an opportunity in the United States of America that they will not be given anywhere else. Absolutely. You know, a lot of them have come out of, uh, you know, out of the inner city. And... Um, and here they are. They've given. They've got this opportunity, and they're getting paid enough that they could take care of their entire families, you know, and and bring their family out of out of the inner city, out of the uh, uh, poverty. They've got an opportunity because God has given them a gift, you know, of of a strong strong body that's able to do things that you and I can't do. I can't run that fast. Can't jump that high, and you know. But instead of being grateful to a nation that has that kind of an opportunity and, and you know, to get their education, they, they had an opportunity. How many times did they go to college, they get their education because of their abilities? And instead of, instead of being grateful, they raise their fist at a nation that has given them that? Does the nation have faults? Is the nation perfect? Yes. It has faults and no perfect but they are ungrateful spoiled brats <laughs> they don't understand what opportunity they have here that they don't have anywhere else and they should be fired especially raising a fist they should be fired uh, I had an email I think I shared this with you during the break last week now you never know whether the email is true 100% true or not but uh, but the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs hunt had said you will stand, you will put your hand over your heart, you're my employee, when you're on my field, you're going to do go by my rules, what you do off field is your business, and you know that's not true either, but he says, oh, I will fire you, it doesn't matter who you are, well they had one who didn't stand, I don't know what the reason for it was on Thursday last week, to my knowledge he did not get fired, he did get injured in the game, but, uh, so I don't know if that email had any truth to it or not, but, uh, so I get pretty upset with them. And the NFL's uh, um, popularity is depleted. <laughs> it is going down. People are fed up with them. Yeah, and uh, so, you know, it's, it's – I want to hear from the NFL. They're the, they're, they're the ones that are allowing this behavior to continue. And so it kind of – but you know what? People go out there, they go to their games, they spend how much money? It's a billion-dollar industry. Tons, of, uh, tons, tons of, money. of money. They support the teams. It's entertainment. And until that stops, what, you think anybody's going to do anything? No, absolutely not. So no, if you no, want to send money. a message, if you want to send a message, don't go to the games. Don't support the teams. Don't, don't watch them. Mm-hmm. You know, listen to the radio. <laughs> there are some there are some polls going across the internet uh, about that. Are you going to watch them? Are you watching them less? Have you turned them off completely? And uh, I did take that, and uh, um, I would suggest if anybody's online, that one I happen to see it on Twitter, but it's it's all over the internet. They're taking polls, and and I don't know who's taking the poll, but um, they if they've become too political and not just in this but in other things we've seen where they've been you know uh, the 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 um ESPN and some of these you know they they're just so political you know just talk sports just talk sports we don't want to hear your political views on anything else just talk sports i mean they'll fire a fire uh, one of their hosts because he said something they didn't like or uh, and uh, that's been going on for a long time, or he took a stand as a Christian against something or made a comment, and so they'll fire him. Uh, but yet these athletes out there taking a, a knee during the national anthem, they're not going to do anything about that. No. Yeah. So. Um, in the movie, if we want to go to Hollywood, we have a few minutes left. The mm-hmm. scary movie, the horror movie, It, Stephen King, that had a record shatter, shattering of 123 
million dollars in its North America debut for New Line and Warner Brothers. Uh, that's ahead of Sunday's morning record-shattering estimate of 117 million. So again, wow. we complain. You know what? We complain about Hollywood. We complain. You listen to all these, even Let's Stephen the King, movies. even Stephen King and his nasty remarks about Mr. Trump and so forth. You know, and, he banned. Uh, he banned Mr. Tr- he banned the president from seeing that movie. I don't know how you can ban anyone, but but the <laughs> That's point how the crazy point, Twitter is. But the point is, you know, we just go ahead and we support these various venues, and that allows them to um, promote their, you know, their odd ideas and agendas. There was a cartoon. I saw a cartoon this weekend, and it showed a storefront with a big sign across the front where the name of the store you know like you'd see pennies or or sears and, and it read nuts fruit cakes and turkeys and the two car- cartoon characters that are walking by the one says to the other is that a holiday store or a democrat headquarters nuts mm. fruit cakes and turkeys crazy so, crazy that well, was a fun, that was funny it's supposed to be funny, huh? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I missed it. <laughs> well, it's just crazy that we even put signs up like that. Um, we've just, uh, I don't know. It's just crazy it was a how. a cartoon. I know. But I'm sorry. We're going, we're losing today. It is, the show is over for today, Melody. I'm just, you know, it's, uh, it's it over a- and I still have plenty to say. I just, you know, it just, where we've come in this nation is so sad uh, because we've been such a nation of opportunity and uh, and freedom. And we will be back tomorrow. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the Third Temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the Third Temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, 
Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. 